Hello friends, we know that our Holy Torah does not waste a single word, and so it's bizarre when talking about saras, the affliction of leprosy, that the Torah seems to be a little bit repetitive. The verse says, V'ra ha-kohen es anega, and the kohen looks at the blemish, and then yet again, V'ra'ahu ha-kohen, and the kohen will look at the blemish. And this is bizarre, the Meshach Chachma has a hard time with this. Why would the Torah repeat the word V'ra ha-kohen, V'ra ha-kohen? We know the Kohen has to look at it, he has to investigate, he has to make an assessment, he has to make a diagnosis. But there's no reason to repeat the Re'iyah. So the Meshach Chachma argues that each Re'iyah is teaching us something different. The first Re'iyah, the raw Kohen, is telling us that he has to look at the ailment, he has to look at the man's skin or the woman's, the woman's uh, uh, home and her walls, and he has to assess whether or not this is indeed Saras, and he has to render a decision. Apsa whether she's going to be Tmea or Tahora, whether he's going to be pure or impure. But there's another re'iyah as well, and that is to see the person himself, the ra'ahu. He has to look at the patient, and he has to make an assessment if that patient is really fit to be rendered a decision about him, whether he is capable of receiving a diagnosis. The Gemara tells us that we have to be very sensitive when the Kohen looks at a patient. For instance, don't go up to a person during a holiday, during the uh, Chol HaMoed, while he's trying to celebrate with the family, whether it's a trip to, uh, to one of the many Chol HaMoed establishments, the zoo, or perhaps uh, a trip to the mall, and go up to him in the middle of his height of his happiness and tell him, by the way, you have a blemish on your arm. You have a blemish and you are now a Mitzor and you have to be excommunicated, uh, so to speak, from your family, from your community, and from your people. We don't dare go up to him, says the Gemara, during that time, Uvayom, only in the day that you're allowed to see him, a day when he's not in the middle of Simcha, when he's not celebrating, because we have to be sensitive to what's going on in his life. Says the Chachma, this doesn't just apply to a time period of happiness, but it applies to a person in a particular state, an emotional or mental state. If a person, for instance, is in his Shev Mishta, his days of celebrating his wedding, don't go up to him and render a diagnosis. The Kohen is not permitted to, uh, to, to announce the diagnosis, to pronounce that he is Tameh during the time that Chassan is celebrating the happiest time of his life. So not only does the Kohen have to be aware of the time of year in which he's rendering his decision, but also the mental and emotional and social state of the person to whom he's facing and who he's looking at. That type of sensitivity, that type of awareness is perhaps instructive, not just for the Kohen, but for all of us, because everything we see and everything we do and every interaction we have, we are constantly rendering diagnos- diagnostics. We are constantly suggesting that someone is Tame or Tahar, rendering judgments all the time. Is the person who stands before me pure or impure? Are his intentions good or perhaps he has ulterior motives? Is the person in my family, is this person out to get me or is this person my best friend? Are they good to me? Are they loyal? Are they not loyal to me? These decisions, these judgments that I'm rendering all the time about people in my life, about people with whom I interact, they require an understanding about the person that you're looking at. What state of mind are they in? What situation are they facing? Where are they in in their lives when you look at them and they look impure? Are they really impure? Or is there something going on behind the scenes? Is there something beneath the surface that has muddied the waters, that has colored my perception of who they are? In addition, there is a beautiful comment from the Sefer Glilei Zahav. The Glilei Zahav says, it's not just that the Kohen has to be sensitive to the person who appears to have an affliction and to make sure that when rendering the decision, he understands the entirety of that person's reality and their life and their background and their experiences and what kind of day they had and what they had for lunch. But not only does that person have to be sensitive to the potential patient, but the Kohen, the doctor himself, must be aware of his own bias, of his own blind spot. The Gemara tells us that a person is summa ba'achas me'enav. If he's blind in one of his eyes, he is puzzle, he is unfit to render the halachic decision regarding the mitzorah. He is not allowed to diagnose someone with leprosy if he cannot see with both eyes. And this is bizarre because not being able to see with both eyes doesn't prevent a normal doctor from being able to render a diagnosis. He can see with the other eye perfectly well. There's no problem there. But rather, says the Galilei Zohav, that if he doesn't have two eyes, he doesn't see the entire perspective. He doesn't have depth perception of the reality he's looking at. He sees maybe with his left eye or maybe with his right eye. And therefore, maybe he only sees the chova. Maybe he only sees the side 
of a person that is guilty, is nefarious, is acting out of a sense of, of, of some sort of negative personality trait or deficiency. But he doesn't see the part of the person that comes from the goodness of their heart. The Nefesh HaChaim, Rav Chaim Velazhner, points out, since the beginning of time, since the act of Adam HaRishon taking from the Eitz Adat, from the Tree of Knowledge, every action and every thought and every motive of mankind henceforth is filled with both good and bad. The Eitz Adas, Tovara. And that means that whenever you do something, there's a little bit of bad and there's a little bit of good. And hopefully the good outweighs the bad. But everything we are doing throughout our lives is a little bit sullied with a negative implication, with a little bit of a mida ra'a, perhaps selfishness, perhaps arrogance, maybe jealousy, je- jealousy or anger, or something negative is fueling that. It could be only 5% of our motivation is impure. It could be even 1%. But if a Kohen doesn't have two eyes, what it means, says the Gilelezov, is that he will be bound, he'll be more likely to see the negative motivator than the entire person he's looking at. Chazal tell us, it means you have to look at the entire person and you have to be, you, the judge, the diagnostician has to be an entire person. If you are incapable of seeing the merit and the whole merit of another person, then you have no business judging them. And so the next time you see something that you don't like in another individual, the next time it looks like someone's up to no good and you judge them harshly, remember, Do I have a right to judge them? Is today the day that they ought to be judged? Or did something go on in their life when they need a little more leeway? They need a little more understanding and perhaps sensitivity and zechus, a little little bit more compromising approach. And perhaps everything's fine in their lives. Maybe they're fit to be judged, but maybe I am not fit to judge them. Maybe I'm looking with a negative perspective. Maybe I'm staring at them out of anger. Maybe I'm looking out of jealousy. Maybe I have a blind spot. And so we have to think twice, three and four times before ever judging our fellow man. Shabbat Shalom.